10, 15, keep it moving. There's so many ways to make money. So many ways. I could give you 10 ways to make money right now, guys. 10. I could give you 10. Let's hear your top three. A top three, I'll give you, I'll give you like, I'll, I'll just go on a rant. I don't know a top. You can start a maid business right now, right? Okay, so you have a maid, $10 to clean your house, Scott's house. Okay, I'm going to now charge Scott $15. I'm going to come the maids clean your house at $10 a rate. I can go print out flyers now and put them across the whole city. I have nothing, to, these are just maids that charge $10 an hour. But now I'm charging 15 and if you call my number, it's going to be 15 an hour. And then when they go clean your house for 150 bucks, I'm now going to make 50 bucks and pay them 100 That's my maid business. Scott and Luca's maid business. Second one, uh, obviously drop shipping. Uh, you could do what he's doing. Uh, he does many things. Is one of his like, he's a multifaceted Swiss Army knife over there. But one of the things he, he does is, you know, flipping cars, you flip cars. Um, you can do the, you know, get back to the basics. My first thing was flipping Supreme, flipping shoes. Like that's an easy one if you're not making money. Uh, you can start Instagram accounts. Uh, you know, those some of those meme page guys make some good money. You know what I mean? <sighs> You'd be surprised. Um, obviously, you know, I mean, we can go. Dude, I can go days for days. It's just the art of the middleman. Like, yeah. think about how you can embed yourself from like one facet to the other and just weasel your way in there. Well, that first concept you're talking about, drop servicing, that's like very undervalued. Not a lot of people super take advantage of drop under, servicing. Dude, super undervalued. You can literally do that with like raking leaves or mowing lawns. All right. This guy, Jonathan, charges $20 to mow your lawn, charging you 50 bucko. It's about lead acquisition, getting the customer. And then like you do the rest from there. I'm going to film this video soon called making $300 a day with the Costco food cart. Ooh. So are you familiar with Costco's food mart? Of course. So you know their big ass frozen yogurt? Mm -hmm. $1.35. I've always had this thought and I'm going to film this on Venice Beach. It's it's technically a little illegal because you need the, um, the food license or whatever. But I'm going to buy 100 of those, put them in like a cool down thing and then buy like a big thing of like candy like little packs of candy. So I wrap each one. Total cost is probably a dollar fifty each. Mm -hmm. If it maybe a little bit more. So now they have the frozen yogurt and then the mix in to the candy, the M and they can choose the M and M's, the Reese's pieces, mm -hmm. but you sell them for $5, $5 on Venice beach. So cheap, so cheap, but you're making over $3 on each one. You sell a hundred, which is so you can do that in an hour. All you already made 300 bucks. Dude. I can't wait to see that video. I'll tell you another finesse I did when I was younger. When I was 14, 15, my mom used to go to Whole Foods. Uh, she was like, she was really not wise with her money, but like she like really wanted us to eat well. Like mm -hmm. that was one of her things. I don't know if it's like a cultural European thing, but like something about food is like you, like we can be living in like the gutter, but like we have to like eat like decently. You know what I mean? Right. Like, we, like that was just with her. That was her thing. Like if we're going to spend money anywhere, it's going to be on food. Uh, I mean, that's great for me, but she used to come back, bring the receipts and I used to take the whole foods bag. And this was like, you gotta understand, like I was skateboarding when I was growing up. So like we were like really like making like pinching pennies, bro. I used to take everything on the receipt into the bag. And I only did this in dire moments because it made me feel really sus, but it hit every time. I used to go into whole foods, take the whole foods bag, take what was on the receipt, put it back in the bag and then return it. It would only work if she had paid for cash and then they would pay me the cash back. So imagine this. I got my little skateboard. I got my little shit. Obviously, I couldn't do like, you know, $100 bills. But like when she spent like $40 at Whole Foods, I would go bring everything in the thing, take the receipt and then get the cash back. Wait, what do you mean by you brought everything in? Like you brought the actual food back? No, no, no. no. I would take the bag and I would walk back into Whole Foods and I would take everything on the receipt and put it in the bag. And so I would put all the goods back into the whole foods bag and I would take the receipt. Damn. <laughs> Dude, this is hustle, yo. <laughs> that is crazy. Bro, that's yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Hey, I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> Y'all not hit, bro. So basically you got to do what you got to do to survive. You're returning the whole LA foods, streets. foods to them themselves. And at the time, I don't know if it still would, would work now. I haven't done it in years, but they would give you the cash back if you paid cash. Wow.